Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, today, we'll be talking about the Kickstarter program for businesses. Here with me is uh, Fyodor Pankratov, who is the founder of uh, Goldman Professionals, who is helping the international community here in the UK, and who is also now a government-authorized Kickstart gateway. Uh, obviously, if you have any questions, ask them either here in, the, in Zoom in the Q&A section or post them in the Facebook in comments. Uh, we'll try to answer them live. Uh, so, Fyodor, over to you now. Uh, tell us what Kickstarter is, please. Thank you, Anastasia. Uh, so, Kickstart is a government grant program for businesses of any size, startups too. Uh, and the key benefit of this program is that you will get workers help you out with the business in the form of six-month placements. And the salaries of these workers is fully covered by the government. Plus, you get a bit of a training and development cash grant on top of that. So, uh, the way the program works, um, there are Kickstart ga uh, gateways like ourselves. And there are there is Department of Work and Pensions and Job Center Plus. And we deal with uh, employers, we deal with companies who may want to benefit from this program and we help them to understand how it works, understand the needs of their business, how it can work, and we submit the application on your behalf. Um, the, on the other end, you would get um, so the type of candidate, right? So you would get uh, 16 to 20 four years old uh, young people who are on universal credit. Universal credit is the UK benefit system for the unemployed. Uh, and what you would get if you proceed for the, with the application uh, is you will get a selection of candidates who you can choose. Uh, and then if you're happy to proceed with any specific person, you start the placement. So in terms of um, the, the, again, the key benefit is that essentially you get someone to help with the business and the salary is fully covered by the government, which is great. And this is the measure to help uh, the uh, youth in the UK to not be in long-term unemployment, to give them skills. And the core idea of this program is to help them get work experience and get employability support. More about that in a second. So with employability support, it's uh, basically it's the requirement of the grant. So it's not just for you to provide meaningful work, uh, uh, but it's also to help with, you know, with the onwards, long, longer term career journey. So it's things like with CVs, cover letters, interviews, uh, helping them to understand when and how to apply. And uh, the good news is we fully cover this uh, portion of the grant requirements. So you don't need to worry about this. What you need to kind of worry about is to make sure that you have work to give that you want uh, the person to be in the team you should treat them not like a freelancer but as a team member uh, and have regular contact with them and we help you take care of the rest uh, so in terms of the time frames if you apply now remember we're dealing with the government and this is a great program but uh, the time frames are not instant so you need to plan ahead uh, so what would happen is, uh, for example, you decide to apply with us, uh, then within one to two working days, we review your application, we ask you all the questions necessary, we help you make sure that it's fully compliant, then we send it through, then we wait three to four weeks uh, to, for the Department of Work and Pensions to approve uh, your application, and then we need to publish the vacancy. We will also, in the meantime, we will wait for the approval. We will send you information to fill in about the action or vacancy and we help you to create the vacancy so that you get better quality of candidates to make it attractive vacancy. Uh, and then this vacancy is posted. It could take a few days. It could take up to a month. Then you do recruitment. Uh, and then once the person starts working, the placement starts pretty much straightforward. You may want to hire the first person who applies to you. You may want to conduct a round of interviews. You may want to provide them with a case study to solve. It's up to you. Um, but remember, when you go ahead with applying for these placements uh, to create them, uh, these are 16 to 24 years old. So these are quite young people with limited experience who are on unemployment benefits. Um, now, so all know if you apply, for example, today, it could take something between two and three months until the placement starts. 
uh, vou ficar só. Uh, now we're going to build this to understand the cash flow. And in terms of cash flow, what would happen? Let's say you're applying for one placement. If you apply with us, what would happen uh, is we don't take any fee from you. We get paid by the government. Uh, then uh, once the placement starts, uh, within a few days, you would get the training and development portion of the grant funding. Uh, and with, uh, with, for each placement, you would get 750 pounds if you apply with us today. Uh, then once the end of the end of the month, uh, you have to pay the salary yourself. So that's something you need to note. The salary would be around 500 to 1,000 pounds for this employee. Uh, and then within two, uh, two weeks, you would get reimbursement for this salary. And this is how it will work every month in terms of salaries. You pay the salary, then you get full reimbursement. Um, the important bit about training and development uh, grants, uh, which you get up front, is that it should be used on the eligible expenditure. So that's something to remember. So you can't just take this grant funding and then spend it on marketing or spend it on buying business software. It has to be spent on a Kickstarter employee. There may be checks and you have to keep the records for the next six years. Um, and then I guess uh, let's talk about the use cases. So the use cases is pretty much think about your business, think where you need help, and the most common ones is to do with sales and marketing and with admin support. So things like helping you generate uh, leads on LinkedIn, helping you create marketing campaigns, helping you create content, uh, thinking about uh, researching the competitors, researching the markets, uh, creating online courses, uh, writing down, uh, you know, processes in your business, but bearing in mind that the people who come, they may not have needed full-time education and you need to manage them and monitor them. So bear in mind that the task you give should be easy to complete and relatively uh, easy to do without any prior experience. Uh, things like uh, customer support assistance. Right. Things like uh, if you have a restaurant, then any kind of uh, any work in restaurants can be done through the Kickstarter. Uh, the another important thing about the use cases. So, for example, we have a mixture of startups, small companies, consultancies, restaurants. It doesn't really matter. Uh, is that the placement can be fully remote. Uh, and this type of placements, they are actually easier to manage for the government and easier for us to manage too. Because then we don't need to do kind of uh, on-spot inspection about health and safety. Uh, we may need to do those in case, uh, you know, you have premises. And then uh, th these jobs are very easy to outsource. You know, business, again, sales related, business development development, marketing, research, admin support, uh, quality assurance testing. So you, 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 may, you name it. So it's pretty much almost anything. But be cautious about the tech-related jobs. So don't try to hire a tech developer because uh, you may get someone who may want to start a career in tech, but these people would have no experience and they would likely not have completed a, a degree related to computer science. Because these people are highly demanded in the, in the economy and it's unlikely that they will be on universal credit and it's highly unlikely that they will be willing to get for the job. Now, the last bit I forgot to mention is the kind of the terms uh, in terms of uh, the employment. So these are six month placements and the salary which is covered, which is reimbursed by the government, is 25 hours national minimum wage. And that's why this 25 hours national minimum wage this depends on the age, the actual amount which you have to pay, uh, and the reimbursement amount will correspond to how much you pay. You can hire them for longer, but this amount won't be covered. You can pay them higher, but it's, this amount won't be covered. Anything above 25 hours national minimum wage. Um, yeah, and a little bit about who we are. So we have been a career consulting agency. We have been helping young people on their career journey, understand what they can do, how they can be useful for the employers, how can they become more employable. And then we started working with the government on this amazing program. And that's pretty much what we do right now. Uh, and we've been working with Sterling Law on a, on a bunch of immigration matters, on a bunch of legal matters, and they have been absolutely amazing. So thank you again for hosting us.
Uh, thank you, Fedor. And uh, I have a couple of questions. You pretty much covered everything quite extensively, so thank you very much. But however, uh, are there any requirements in terms of um, company size who can participate in this program? Like, uh, do they ha- need to have minimum amount of employees, maximum amount of employees, etc., etc.? Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. So technically speaking, there are uh, soft requirements and hard requirements. In terms of hard requirements. Those are that uh, uh, the business and the directors of the business don't have problems with with the law and don't have financial problems. So uh, there's no, there are no bankruptcies, uh, there are no county court judgment. Mm-hmm. Uh, after that, uh, technically speaking, even a very young company which has less than 12 months of operations can apply and we have cases uh when these companies were given a grant funding and we also know that companies which have no employees right now on payroll which is the system to manage your employees in the uk can also apply and successfully get the grant uh we know that we are not the only one kicks our gateway out there uh, and uh, there is a bit of confusion about the requirements but we know for sure if Uh, the employability support is great. We know if you fill in the application form the right way uh, and you show that the business is alive, uh, then you can apply and then you can get uh, funding even if your business is quite young, even if your business doesn't have anyone on PYE. Mm-hmm. So uh, just to sum up and make sure I understood it correctly, it's for any company pretty much in the UK who mm-hmm. wants to employ someone for entry-level position and this person has to be on payroll so they cannot for example be self-employed for that company uh, they will be put on payroll to get the reimbursement mm-hmm. um yes um i think another important thing to mention is that this kickstart placement they should not replace your current recruitment activities and they should not uh, in any negative way impact your current workforce mm-hmm. even contractors in the uk so if you ha- if you have already a marketing manager If you apply for Kickstart, this should be helping the marketing manager with marketing. This should not replace your marketing manager. Uh, and think of it as an addition to your workforce. Think of it like as a low, relatively low-skilled personnel who you can use as a talent academy for yourself, but they should not uh, you know, cause you to fire or reduce hours of your, uh, your work. Right. Okay. Um, and... Is there like a limit on how many placements um, a company can apply for? Mm-hmm. Um, there, there are different limits. And funny enough, we talked to DWP, Department of Work and Pensions, yesterday about it. We got completely different info to what we operate with. But right now, as it stands uh, from our experience, um, for every placement employee, you need to have at least one person in the business. Mm-hmm. Now, how you explain what person in the business is varies from gateway to gateway uh, but i would say for simplicity if you're a small startup you can apply for five placements up to up to 10 placements which is defined uh, if you have more than 10 people in a business i would say applying up to 15 placements is okay uh, if you have more than 20 pl- people in business you can apply up to the amount of people in the business Mm-hmm. That's what we've been seeing so far. And oh. the, the thing is, if you apply, uh, you can reapply again later, which mm-hmm. is great. What's not great is that it's either full approval or full rejection of your application. So if you apply for way too many placements, you just get a rejection and then you need to apply all over again. By the way, that was my second question. What do you do if you got rejections or you got refusal from... <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, so refusals, uh, it's not bad. I mean, that's something you have to mention when you reapply and that's something which may cause them to reassess and see, try to understand what why you were rejected in the first place. Uh, and uh, what we see, we have a big portion of uh, companies which apply for us uh, while they after they were rejected from the initial application. And they were rejected when they applied themselves. And usually the case that they apply for way too many placements and we see it right They could have applied for another gateway and reasons for rejection could be, you know, numerous. Could be no, lack of employability support, uh, not filling in the form correctly, which surprisingly, but other Kickstarter gateways don't 
uh, monitor this closely. Uh, too many placements to apply. Uh, sometimes it could be that the company is too young and that's like a risk factor and then it just plays out in the wrong way. Um, but yeah, so it's it's not nothing not, nothing to worry if you get rejected by this other time frame. So every time you apply, it would take at least three to four weeks to get a decision. So you can potentially help these businesses to apply successfully of instead course. of them applying themselves, making mistakes, and then having to go through the yes. process again and again. Um, yes. Yep. You just Sorry. also mentioned um, employability support. Could you mm -hmm. extend a bit more on this one? Uh, sure. So um, this is the requirement of the grant that you help the employees get to the workforce. And this is, as it stands, helping with CVs, with cover letters, you know, helping them understand what they want from the career. Mm -hmm. So it's not helping them to become a great uh, marketing assistant it's for them to understand, you know, how do they find an actual long term employment? Now, it's great if you can potentially hire this person full time. But the idea of this grant is not for for them to for you to keep this personnel but to give give them the skills necessary to have long-term employment what we do we have a three month long program quite comprehensive one uh, which uh, covers all the kind of necessary bits we just walk mm -hmm. them through the whole process and we keep in touch uh, during throughout the grant so the so if the person is for six months uh, they will start so first three months they are on the program other three months, we also keep in touch at least once a month. Okay. And you just say there is a kind of limit for six months. Um, I was wondering if a company was to hire uh, someone for six months, could they then find another person for the same uh, job, for the same role for another six months? Or is it kind of limited to one person per position? Uh, sure. So the, the, the restriction comes with hiring the same person for the same company for this. Uh, well, that's what you can't do beyond six months. What you can definitely do, you can apply for six months placements and then you can apply for another six month placement to start right after the first placement starts, uh, the first placement. Okay. Uh, what you can also do, you are absolutely flexible with withdrawing your application at any time. So there is, I mean, it, it's better if you know ahead of time what you want to get out of it. But if you think throughout the process it's not right for you, even if the placement already started, and you know after the first month you realize the person is not right for you, or if you understand that you don't have the capacity to manage the placement, it's okay to cancel it. Mm -hmm. It's okay to stop it. You get reimbursement for all the salary you already paid out, and then you can actually apply for another place. I mean, depending on the reasons. For example, it may happen that you hire the person, the person is just not right for you. You see that they don't have the right work ethic. Ideally, you would have spotted this during the interview process. You can stop the placements, quoting the students, and then apply again for another placement. The worst part of this is the time frame. Again, you have to apply, and it takes for the vacancy to be republished. Hopefully, the time frames will be quicker, but that's hopefully, in realistic terms, that's another two or three months to the placement. But that's quite a long time. So the company should expect uh, to get new applicants, say, in two, three months once they applied. Yes, the on the date of application. Mm -hmm. Now, I, what we also think, it could be a bit quicker. It could be that uh, it could be within a month, but mm -hmm. it won't be next day. It won't be next week because it takes time for uh, the Department of Work and Pensions to conduct their due diligence. Mm -hmm. It will be lighter once the company is approved and it's much lighter because we are a gateway and we conduct our commercial due diligence very quickly. Um, and then once the company was already approved, reapplying again, we'll be waiting for the vacancies to be published. Mm -hmm. And this can take uh, from two days to 24, 28 days. And then you do the recruitment. So that's why it could take some time. Right. Uh, I was also wondering, this sounds like a good opportunity for those who are currently on student visas to get some experience with companies. Can they be considered for this for this program? Or... Uh, unfortunately not. Okay. And, uh, and it comes from two ways. First of all, uh, well, uh, that's the immigration matters. And uh, if you're on the student visa, you can't claim public funding. No recourse for public funds that would be on the BRP of these people. So mm -hmm. unfortunately, they can't do this. And people in full-time education, they cannot claim universal credit. 
Uh, right. So only those who already finished their studies or dropped out or did not, and are not in full-time education, they can be on universal credit. That's so far as I understand. Right. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Unfortunately, then. Unfortunately. Well, there's tier five process, but that that's completely different. And no, I'm, unfortunately, the UK government is not willing to give money out to the internationals to mm-hmm. help them boost the economy. This. Okay. But if you're an employer and if you are like myself, I'm on the entrepreneur visa. That's completely. Different. Okay, so you can still potentially yeah. apply. As a and... as a business, you can yeah. get almost any kind of grant funding. As a person, there are limits if you are on a visa. Right. Okay. And for example, say it goes well with the person uh, a company found through the Kickstarter, uh, can they then keep this person? So there is no say limitation on how long they can work for. Of course. I mean, uh, the, the thing is, the grant would cover 25 hours mm-hmm. national minimum wage for six mm-hmm. months. You can hire them for longer hours, pay them higher salary, hire them afterwards, upgrade them up, uh, right away to another program. Uh, not a problem, but just like this extra bits won't be reimbursed. Anything Thank on you. Top of the 25 Thank hours. you, Fedor. I don't think I have any more questions unless you want to mention anything else. Um, I would say I think it's been an amazing program so far. I mean, it's kind of difficult to deal with the government because of the time frames and it's a huge department. They have more than a thousand people dealing with Kickstart. Uh, but I think it's great. It's amazing for businesses and we're seeing how, you know, businesses are already benefiting, benefiting from this and the cash grant also helps to, you know, manage the cash flow a bit. Um, it's very versatile solution. You can just, uh, you know, use it as a talent academy as well, but you can just use it to get someone to help you with kind of things around, you know, mm-hmm. with your restaurant or, you know, what. Uh, and, uh, yes, uh, I think there will be a link, uh, below somewhere with, uh, how to apply. It's literally takes less than 10 minutes of your time. You just fill in the form and then. We, we, we get back to you within same or next working day. Mm-hmm. We, you know, clear out some, some areas if they need to be clear out. If we are happy with the information you provided, we do our little bit of magic and we submit. Yeah, I'll leave your contact details just under this video on our page on Facebook so that those who are interested can contact you directly and obviously you'll help them apply. And yeah, I think it's really a win-win situation whereas employees get kind of experience, obviously, and the job position. Mm-hmm. And oh, the there's gets one different. final bit and that's about hiring someone you already know comes across quite often. Uh, unfortunately, that's something which is not supported by this grant program. Mm-hmm. So if you already know there's a specific individual, we can try to help you matchmake this individual in the process. But because we work with the companies and uh, job center plus they work with, uh, you know, the, the candidates, we can't really do this. We can help you to narrow down the search to the postcode related to where your business premises mm-hmm. are but you can't just put your own person in. They have to be referred by the department of work. But apart from that, it's an amazing program. Okay, that's cool. That's good to know. Thank you, Fedor. Thank you, Anastasia. Have a great day. And you, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.